there, but anyway, uh, the purpose of this tape is to uh, be run in conjunction with the, uh, the VCR containing all of our, our, our family photographs. If you run this tape uh, along at the same time that you play the video, hopefully the, uh, the words on this tape will explain what's on that, that VCR. And thanks to my nephew, uh, Skippy Kress, uh, he, he took all my old 8mm film and put it on this, uh, this VCR for me. Now, the first photograph you'll see here was taken from my mother-in-law, Barbara Wolf's uh, apartment in Herxt, Germany, next, near Frankfurt. And she lived up on the third floor, and so I was filming out the window. The pictures were taken in about 1955, not too long after World War II. And the, the, the thing is that you can see on here that uh, many, many people rode bicycles and strange-looking vehicles because the, the automotive, automotive industry in Germany had yet, not yet had a chance to rebuild. Uh, again, you'll see some... So there, there you see a, a tractor and a, and a wagon uh, in, the, in, the, in the city of Herxt. Many, many people drove uh, bicycles. Here's a three-wheel truck. Uh, you'll see several other different type of three-wheel vehicles because those were some of the, the first cars that uh, were manufactured when the industries were getting just getting started. Here comes a three-wheel vehicle around. What's in the background there is the IG Herxt uh, complex. Here's another strange-looking three-wheeled uh, vehicle. Uh, there's a big American car. Of course, the, uh, the Americans uh, were able to bring some of theirs over when they, uh, they came. And there's another strange-looking three-wheeled uh, vehicle. And uh, as, you, as you can see, they were just very, very common. And even though the, the cars were very, very small. <laughs> How about that? Look at them today with their big BMWs and Mercedes. <laughs> Okay, uh, this picture here was taken as as Betty uh, Betty Wolf uh, and her mother Barbara Wolf uh, were coming out of the apartment and getting ready to go to the states. Betty and I were preparing to go back to America for me to get discharged from the from the service. Uh, we had been married on the fifteenth of June, nineteen fifty five. And here we are arriving at McGuire Air Force Base in, Ma in, in New Jersey uh, for discharge in 1956. Uh, there's Betty. Of course, you can see she's, she's pregnant. Uh, walking along the pier at the base at McGuire Air Force Base. And uh, I just thought this was a pretty view, so we, we took some shots of the boats and so forth in the, in the, in the, in the bay. Uh, after I received my discharge, uh, then we, we then proceeded over to my home in Amsterdam, Ohio, and uh, that's where our son, Johan, was born. Uh, and soon you'll see uh, us arriving. There's another shot of Betty walking along the pier. You'll see a picture of us arriving. Here we are right now, arriving at the airport in Pittsburgh. Uh, my mom and dad and my sister, uh, Flora, better known as Dodie, uh, was waiting for us at the airport and picked us up and drove us from Pittsburgh uh, over to Amsterdam, Ohio, which was about, about 100 miles, I guess. Here's my father mowing the grass at his home in Amsterdam, Ohio, where they lived all their lives. And my dad uh, built, I think, seven different homes uh, in Amsterdam. There's my mother, Flora Provan. Uh, and again, this is at their home in what was known as Allensworth Edition. There's my 1955 Plymouth. Uh, that we bought, Betty and I bought when we first arrived in America for the first time. It was a very nice car that had never been abused or and had very low mileage. Here's my mother and father getting uh, in their, into their car, and I just don't recall where they were going. It looks like they were they were spiffied up, so they were going shopping or someplace there. Maybe I, I just don't know. But anyway, that's them pulling out in their car, which also was a Plymouth. This is uh, my 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 cousin uh, Peter. Provan, who is the son of Eleanor and Bill Provan. Now we see uh, my cousin Jack Marcus, the waving there. Him and my dad was helping me set up the, the house trailer there. That's Betty in the doorway, my wife Betty. And uh, what we did was we set up a house trailer for her to reside in while I was in, in Newfoundland. Here's Betty, uh, the rear end of Betty, while she's picking strawberries. And it must be pretty warm because I see her. And there's my sister, Dodie, or Flora again. 
uh, help me pick strawberries. And I don't know uh, where this was at. I, I think it was at my grandmother McVeigh's home. And here's Betty now. Uh oh, she's hanging up her brassiere. Uh, she just finished washing clothes and uh, hanging them out to dry. These pictures were taken at my uh, my father and mother's home in Amsterdam, Ohio. Here I am getting a little hug. And uh, I was going to say in the background, when, oh, 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 I get, I get goose too. Uh, in the background there, you can see the Church of God and uh, Allensworth's big, that's the church in the far background there, uh, and Allensworth's big uh, store. Uh, this is a family gathering somewhere. Uh, Betty there in the, in the pink blouse. Uh, I, I do see my uncle Jim Marcus, uh, my aunt Cleo Marcus. There's uh, Ella Sutton on the far left. Uh, his wife is in there, uh, Carol Sue Marcus. Uh, there's Carol Sue Marcus on the far left in the striped dress, and uh, uh, her mother Cleo Marcus standing in the other striped dress. Uh, that's my mother standing with her back towards us now. Uh, she's bent over. That's my mom, Laura Proven. And uh, this is my uh, my my sister's uh, son, Kenton. Uh, my sister, uh, Catherine Proven, died giving birth to her fourth child, and uh, this was her first son, uh, Kenton, uh, bogus. And uh, unfortunately, uh, after they left, I, 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 they, they they left Amsterdam. I, I was never able to see the children again. Here I am, uh, along with my cousin Jack Marcus, uh, clearing a, a piece of ground so that we can park a house trailer on it for Betty to stay in. Uh, while I've, uh, I go to back into the Air Force, I, I re-enlisted. Uh, Betty and I didn't care too much for for the uh, civilian life, and so I re-enlisted in the Air Force, and uh, soon after this picture was taken, uh, went to uh, Pepperell Air Force Base in, in Newfoundland. That's my mother, and uh, oh, she got something in her eyes. She's helping too, and there's my cousin Jackie Marcus. Uh, he's a pretty good sized fellow. And uh, we cleaned off the lot and eventually we moved in this house. That's my dad and Jackie uh, having an argument about who's going to get to, to mow. Uh, as you can see, the, my cousin Jackie outweighs my dad by at least 100 pounds. There's my dad and my mom uh, sitting on their lawn chairs in, in their home. And my dad smoking and there I am with my mother uh, about ready to strangle her. That's just scanning there. Uh oh, here we are coming out of the hospital, out of the uh, this, the hospital there in Steubenville, Ohio, uh, with our new son, uh, John, uh, more commonly known as Johan. And Betty and I are getting into the uh, our, our car uh, to head home to Amsterdam. Uh, that's the Ohio Valley Hospital in, uh, in Steubenville, Ohio, where Johan was born on the 15th of July, 1955. Here we are. Just getting home to our house trailer, which we now have situated out there, and uh, Betty's getting carrying him into the into the house for the first time. Here comes my mother uh, with one, and I, and I just can't recall who that little girl is. I'm sure it's one of uh, her grandchildren or or one of my uh, nieces. Uh, here's Johan. And uh, it's very, very unfortunate that uh, the first few pictures of Johan, he's always in a bad mood and, and crying. Uh, but he had, as you can see, a very bad rash, uh, which was caused by uh, there was something wrong with, uh, with Betty's milk, that uh, he wasn't getting proper nourishment. And unfortunately, we didn't know that at the time. It took several weeks before he was able to, uh, to learn that uh, her milk was no good for him. And we then put him on uh, formula, and uh, everything was fine. So the first few pictures will show him always in a bad mood, crying. And I'm sure he was in pain with the rash and not feeling good and just not getting enough to eat. But from that point on, once we was able to resolve the problem, then the remainder of the pictures, I think you'll see where he's always smiling and laughing. And uh, he was just a perfect boy from that point on. But I so, so much regret that... Uh, we had these difficult days in the beginning, and, and we just didn't know what we were doing. Uh, th this is inside of our house trailer, which was a very nice house trailer. It wasn't too large, but it was a very nice uh, house trailer. 
And we had a little crib there for Johan. Uh, here he is uh, breastfeeding. And uh, again, it's unfortunate that we didn't know that that the milk that he was getting uh, just wasn't uh, nourishing him properly. And so he, he had a very difficult few days. Here we're just scanning the inside of the uh, of the treader, which again was very nice uh, and comfortable. The, 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 wor the worst part about it was that it was located about one mile on the outskirts of Amsterdam, and Betty Betty didn't drive, and so when I left and re-entered re the service and went to, to Newfoundland, Betty uh, remained there in this house treader for several months, and uh, not being able to drive, it was very, very difficult for her to get into town and to get food and, and, and uh, other things. And, and thanks to a, a very, very good neighbor, Walter and Edith Dinger, who helped her out enormously, and for which we will always be very, very grateful, uh, she would have had a, an even more difficult time. Uh, here Betty is uh, getting ready to give Johan uh, one of his first baths, by golly. And uh, as you can see, uh, with that rash, uh, I'm sure it was very, very uncomfortable. Not the biggest bathtub in the world, but uh, it did the job. <laughs> Here he is getting washed down and getting his little butt too, by golly. Got to get at everything. You can see how he's had these, uh, his body was all red with this rash. Again, very, very un unfortunate. Here we are getting out now. It'll be dried off and dressed up. Yeah, still man. Again, uh, Betty and I just never cared too much for the uh, for the civilian life and and, and, and the area around uh, Ohio, and, and so we both agreed that it would be best if uh, if I went back into the Air Force uh, after I after having been out about two months. There we are putting some little fastening on his wingy dingy there to keep it from uh, getting sore. Uh, I, I rejoined the Air Force in '56 again and uh, made it a career and served for 31 and a half years before retiring in uh, 1983. Here, Johan is again getting breastfed, and as you can see by the face on Betty, that uh, it's hurting. She never was uh, very comfortable with that. It uh, was very painful for her to breastfeed Johan, and unfortunately, he wasn't getting the nourishment anyway, so it wasn't until we put him on a formula that uh, things, things changed. Here, here's the proud daddy uh, holding him, trying to give him a pacifier, and he doesn't want anything to do with it. Uh, <laughs> like Joe Lewis slugging it out there. This is probably one of the, the, the last pictures on which you'll see him crying. Uh, sound, no, he's not sound asleep, but it looks like, I think it's the lights. Yeah, it's the lights because there was four huge uh, lights on this camera that, uh, that was very, very strong. And I can understand how they were causing him some problems. But in those days, that was the only way I could get the pictures taken. And I'm so happy that I did. Otherwise, there wouldn't be any record of these these times and, uh, and, and what, what he looked like as, as a baby and, and how things were. So, again, even though the camera wasn't the, the greatest camera going in, and we didn't have VCRs in those days, uh, I'm very thankful that uh, the Skippy was able to piece these together for me. Uh, I don't know where this was. Oh, okay. Here's another picture. I think this was taken up in in, in uh, St. John's, uh, Newfoundland. We lived in a place called Mount Pearl Park, which is about five miles on the outskirts of uh, of uh, St. John's, and it was a very enjoyable time for us. Uh, I was a staff sergeant at that time, and, and uh, so we had enough money to live decently on, and we rented a nice little uh, cabin up there from somebody uh, who had used it 
previously for their summer cottage, and so we rented it on a full-time basis for a couple of years. Here's our son, John, Johan, uh, in his crib uh, in this in our home there in, in St. John's or Mount Pearl Park, and uh, you'll, you'll see the smiles now on his face, and from this point on, he's, uh, he's in a good mood. Uh, and I don't think uh, he was ever in a bad mood for the rest of his life. He's been a good boy. He's never caused any problems and, uh, and always in pretty good health. A couple little little things like a, a broken arm or something, uh, but uh, no, nothing serious. Here he is. You can see him laughing, sitting on the couch there in, in our home in, uh, in, in St. John's. Uh, we, we, we lived there for a couple of years. I was stationed at Pepperell Air Force Base. Uh, here he's getting his baby food. He's almost one year old on this picture, and I think that very, very shortly you'll see uh, photographs of his first birthday, uh, which uh, he celebrated there in in, uh, in Mount Pearl Park on the outskirts of St. John's, Newfoundland. Uh, it wasn't all that bad up there. The, uh, the weather was uh, was decent. Of course, they have winters and snow and whatever. And we used to go out and drive out and watch the big icebergs come floating by. Uh, here we just had a, a diaper change. There we go, by golly, standing up now. How about that? Ain't making no steps yet, but we're up. Those bright lights are, are tough on the eyes. Good boy. Good boy. See a smile? There we go. That's the way babies ought to be.
Uh-oh. Boy, look how skinny old dad was in those days. How skinny old dad was. <laughs> a piece of cake. A piece of cake. Yeah. Uh-oh, there we go. So I'll, I'll taste it first. Yeah, see if it's any good. That's why I got big and fat afterwards. All that sweet stuff. <laughs> Miss Wooch, nope. Nope. Give me a smooch. Nope. Nope. <laughs> sure had my hair cut short in those days. How about we play with the blocks for a while? If you didn't want to play with the doll. Play with the blocks. I'm glad I took all these pictures of his first birthday, by golly. You don't know how precious they are until later later years when you sit and you watch them. Uh, I've got some bad film in here now for a few minutes, I guess. Oh, yeah, here we go. These were our, our neighbors, the Fierces, Gene Fierce and his wife. They never had any children of their own, but they were certainly good good to us, and they, and they watched Johan, and they come by all the time, and, and we worked together. He was a, a teletype operator there at Pepperell Air Force Base, and I worked in tech control. But they were awfully good to us, and we used to visit all the time, each other. He drank a lot of beer. Yeah, yeah. I, and after we parted from there, we never made contact again, so we lost, uh, lost contact. But uh, they were very, very good friends while we were there. Uh oh, that's not beer. That, that's that's a bourbon or something. By golly, here we come. Here we come. Again, this is in the little room. Let me See, 
happy-go-lucky was. And, uh, I'm very thankful for that. So. Oh, we got a car in there, too. Yeah, how about that? Uh-oh, uh-oh, another bath. Another bath. Uh-oh, better get her on these on. <laughs> yes, sir, I think this one was taken... Uh, now we're in uh, in Massachusetts. We got yeah, it is. I got transferred from Pepperell Air Force Base in St. John's, Newfoundland, down to Westover Westover Air Force Base in uh, in Massachusetts, and we rented a nice apartment there in South Hadley Falls. Uh, it was two floors. The uh, the kitchen was and the and the bath was downstairs, and the living room and the bedroom was upstairs. And uh, my mother-in-law, Barbara Wolf, only. Uh, came over to visit us, so you'll see her in some of these pictures here now. Oh boy, it's either another birthday or another Christmas, and I got me a telephone now. Got me a telephone for Christmas or something. Oh, birthday number two, I see the, I can see the two candles there. Yeah, this is birthday number two. Oh, got a big jet for, for birthday. Yeah. <laughs> All dressed up in his new shirt and pants. Yeah. There's Betty. And her mother in the background there, but this, these were taken down the basement. I can tell with the uh, in the kitchen, with the uh, refrigerator, and that in the background there. That's Omi. Uh, where are those two candles at? Oh, there's one. Oh, I'm blowing them out. Yeah, just blew them out. All over with. Still burning. <laughs> I can't do it, Mom. I can't do it. Oh, got one. Oh, got oh, I think I think Mom helped. Anyway, they're out. They're gone. <laughs> Here I am with my smile. In those days, I used to give me haircuts, so they probably not very. Oh, boy, I remember that ball he got there. Uh, he, he kicked that ball and took it and played with it. We went on picnics and, uh, and out in the backyard. Uh, he, he, it's wonder he didn't turn out to be a football player after playing with that ball. But uh, he was never, he only was never too active in sports. <laughs> Bang! There we go. Kick it. Then, uh, yeah, give it another whack. Yeah, I'm coming back for some meat. I'm hungry.
tractor trailer now for whatever this one was, probably Christmas or birthday.
grandfather, um, and they they lived up on the uh, the uh, the graveyard hill for years and years and years. And my grandpa always took there. My grandma Provan now, my dad's mom, and she too lived up on the uh, the graveyard hill. And the reason it was called a graveyard hill was that uh, about half the hillside was uh, the graveyard, and then the rest of it was homes. And that's where I spent almost all of my youth uh, was growing up, up there on the, on the graveyard hill. Because all my aunts and, and both grandmas lived up there, and grandpas. Grandma Provan was a very, very outdoor woman. She wanted to be planting grass and, and pulling weeds and working outside, much preferred over indoors. Now there's Betty's uh, uh, grandma and grand grandfather. So this was taken in a little town called Glasovin, Germany. And uh, we have some very, there, there's her grandpa. Their, their name was Wolf also. And we have some very fond memories of, uh, of visits out there before they died. And they were married for years and years and years. Uh-oh, here we have, uh, oh, I thought it was a broken arm. It was a broken leg. Yeah. Uh, this is back in Vogelway again, because if I remember right, uh, Johan fell off a sliding board. And, and bingoed it. So that's that's what happens when you fall off a sliding board. You break something. But I'm not going to cry about it. I'm going to keep laughing. <laughs> I want that haircut. <laughs> I used to skin her off there. <laughs> yes, I did. Uh, we're planting something. Oh. Yeah, I don't know what we're doing here. Getting in a mess. I have no that looks like my Aunt Honey, Violet Marcus there. Where this was taken, I don't know. Hey, Betty looks real cute on that one. my mother walking down the, uh, the street. I think we're back in Germany 
As a matter of fact, I think we're down in either Birch's Garden or Garmish uh, during one of the visits that they, uh, mom and dad made to Germany. Um, I don't know what year. The, yeah, I think, yes, I do. This was in June of 1971. June of 1971 when mom and dad uh, came over and we went up to uh, the Eagle's Nest. Uh, so we was down in Birch's Garden. And this is on top of the mountain up at the Eagle's Nest. Uh, June of 1971. There's my mother. Uh, let's see here. That's the Eagle's Nest in the background there. There's Mom walking up the steps. Yeah, you can see the Eagle's Nest in the background there. That's Mom up there in, on, uh, on the hill next to the cross. Uh, I don't see my dad. Uh, here are me. That's me and Betty. Me waving. And there was an awful lot of birds up there for some reason. There's mom. Uh, sorry, I don't see my dad there yet. Beautiful country down there in Birch's Garden. Beautiful country. I was so happy that my mom and dad uh, was able to get over there for a visit and see, uh, see the beauty. Uh, back home in Amsterdam, uh, all the years that I spent in Germany, I don't think they really understood how nice it was over there until they got over to see it for themselves, of course. Those are some of the mountains. And now we're out in Colorado Springs. Yeah. Colorado Springs. I was stationed in uh, the Cheyenne Mountain there, and that was the Garden of the Gods that you just saw there. Some very, very famous, unique stone formations. Here we are back in Amsterdam, Ohio now. Sorry to change so fast, but that's my grandma Sutton. Uh, in her later years, she was very, very sick for many years, but uh, quite a, quite a woman, quite a woman, and. Uh, She had an apartment uh, on, in, in, in the basement here of, of, of the house that uh, Sandra Sue Market, Sandra Sue Marcus, and her husband lived above, and they fixed up a nice apartment downstairs for Grandma, and she stayed there until she died. Oh, in the last year or so, she did spend in a in a in a home in Carrollton, Ohio, but she lived for many years there with uh, where, where these pictures were taken. And you can see she's getting pretty frail. But, uh, she had, uh, oh, three girls. My aunt, Cleo, my aunt, Honey, or Violet, and my mother, uh, Flora. And uh, she was married to, to my grandfather, John Kenton Sutton, who I knew for many, many years. He died, I think, when I was about 20 years old. But uh, I certainly grew up. Uh, knowing him, he, we went fishing all the time together, and he was quite a feller. He'd been out in Colorado in his younger days and drove uh, oxen for a, for a mining company and came back into Amsterdam, Ohio, and worked in the uh, deep shaft coal mines for a few years. Uh, and then he was retired for all the years I ever knew him. He did a lot of uh, gardening and fishing. And again, this is Grandma. Uh, some of the later years of her life. Laura Sutton, my grandmother, born in the hills of West Virginia, down around West Union, Smithburg area of, of, uh, of West Virginia, uh, but uh, lived all the years of, that I knew her, of course, in Amsterdam, Ohio there. Yeah, <laughs> she's doing her best to wave. <laughs> Her and my grandfather are both buried in the cemetery uh, down in Burgles, Ohio, uh, just uh, between Amsterdam and Burgles. It's a nice cemetery up on top of the hill there. That's the best I can do, folks. That's, that's, that's a wave from me to you. <laughs> Some wave, isn't it? <laughs> Again, so happy that we was able to have these films taken to remember what they look like. But 
would love to have some of her in our younger, our youth, but we just don't. Oh boy, now these these are are, are, are in, in in much later years. They're taken uh, up on uh, Simmons Ridge. My my mom and dad uh, had a real nice little place that uh, that they fixed up there on Simmons Ridge. They bought it. It was all all torn down and, and run down and. Uh, between the two of them, they fixed it up into a nice, nice home. And they certainly, I think it was probably some of the most enjoyable years of their life was to live up there on Simmons Ridge. There's his dog, Jocko, by golly. Old Jocko. Uh, and there's my dad tilling uh, uh, some ground where he grew a little garden down, up, up on the other. I think he had two and a half acres, maybe three acres up there. And uh, <laughs> he's got to be over 70 here on this picture. And uh, there, he's still running that roller. Yeah. Never was a big man. I don't think he ever weighed over 115 pounds in his life. Worked in the deep shaft coal mines all his life. There's my mom taking down her uh, her laundry. And there's the old shed up in the back. Believe it or not, my dad was 72 years old, and he had a Kawasaki motorcycle back there in that shed and he rode around on top of the hill down through the fields and all over the place. I don't know, with a little luck maybe we'll see a picture with him on his motorcycle, but I don't I'm not sure. Uh you know, always proud of the American flag by God. The every place he lived he had a flag flying. There's his car. And this was the home that they uh, that they lived in for, for many years and uh, that's where they lived when uh, when mom died. And uh, we had to sell the place, and then Dad moved out to stay with uh, my sister Dodie for about a year. I think a little less than a year before he passed on. He just never could understand how Mom went first because he was older than her. And that, that that's their property down through there. You can see the, the little church on the far end of the east there. Not, not now, but before. And that's where they're buried, in Simmons Ridge Chapel, right behind it. Mom and Dad getting ready to go someplace. Yeah, there's his flag, by golly. Proud as everything. He was born in in, uh, in Bantone, Scotland, uh, near a little town called Kilsyth. And a little boy, he immigrated uh, to America with his mom and dad. And uh, his dad uh, died of a broken back. And look how fat I'm getting now, by golly. Oh, boy, am I putting on some weight. But my grandfather, my dad's dad, uh, died in a mining accident, uh, received a broken back, and survived for a while, and he died. And that's when my grandmother uh, married Harry McVeigh. This is my sister's uh, son. That's my sister in the background with her son, Skippy. Skippy, he's the one who later on grew up and, uh, and made this recording for me. And there's uh, Dodie's second husband, Tom, Tom Cress. And that looks like their little boy, Tommy. They had one one daughter and uh, Heidi and uh, one son Tommy, and my sister Dodie had two children uh, from a previous married marriage, uh, you know, Skippy and Bridget. And we may see some pictures of them here. Uh, Dodie and Tom uh, met uh, while well, he was she was visiting us, I think, in Colorado. I'm not sure. And uh, and they got married and they've been married now probably 25 years as of this date. And by the way, today is the 1st of January. Today is the 1st of January, 1995. We just celebrated New Year's Eve last night. There, there's uh, her, my, my sister Dodie, or Flora Provan, with her uh, her daughter Heidi. And we're all visiting with my mom and dad up on Simmons Ridge uh, near Amsterdam, Ohio. Yeah, I'm mad. <laughs> there's old Tom, by golly. Tom served 20 years in the Air Force and got out retired and then went into the uh, teaching profession in uh, in a little town called Chester, Illinois, where they lived uh, years and years and years.
Yeah, I'm sure it was. Yeah, I recognize the, the little garden that he had out in the back there. This is taken at their home in Chester, Illinois. The only thing Chester is remembered for is the creator of Popeye uh, was born out there. It's right along the Mississippi River, and just a little bit south of uh, St. Louis. Tommy, Tommy Cress, and my sister Dodie. Oh boy, here we come now. There's Bridget. Uh, that must have been her graduation. Yeah, oh boy, how pretty we are. Yes, sir. Bridget married a, a fellow from Chester there named, uh, well, we call him Bo. Uh, at the time, uh, his, his, his folks had a pig farm out there, but uh, as of today, uh, they've had two children, and I think she's pregnant right now. As a matter of fact, I know she is, so, uh, got a nice home. She's a nurse. Uh, Bridget's a nurse there in Chester, Illinois, and, 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 and doing very, very well. And, uh, Skippy, I'm not so sure Skippy's in this film, but anyway, uh, he joined the Navy and made a career out of the Navy. Yeah, that's Skippy right there, the one on the left, that's Skippy. A little younger, and this, and hey, we're going to play the trumpet for you. Yeah, well, Skippy uh, uh, married also, and he has two lovely, lovely little daughters. And as of uh, today, uh, they live, they're, they're, they're in, the air, uh, in the Navy, and they live in uh, New Orleans. And he must have about 10 years in the Navy right now, so he'll make it a career. Uh-oh, got some more bad film here, so just hold your breath. Hey, where are we at now? I think we're back in Germany. We skip around a little bit. This is down in Munich. Yeah, I recognize that scene from Munich, Germany. Uh, we were down there several several years ago, uh, a lot of years ago now, and Germany had just won the, the World's Football Championship, football, soccer. And what a celebration they were having. Munich was in an uproar. This is the city hall in, uh, in, in Munich. And uh, well, there's Betty. There's Betty. They had a tremendous celebration for winning that world championship. All the football players, so you may see them later on, were up on the balcony there waving to the crowd. And a very festive occasion. Very, a lot of music there, Betty. Lots and lots of people. Uh, some more bad film here. And all I can do is apologize for the bad film and, and continue to let it run. Hope it clears up. Uh, the last part of this film, and, and, I'll, and I'll mention when uh, when it terminates here, uh, what Skippy did was he, he, he pieced all of my film together, and then uh, at, at the end he pieced on uh, a lot of his, his mother's film, and I can't comment on that film because I don't know a lot of the people or the places, so whenever Dodie's film comes on here, I'll stop editing. And uh, you can watch the remainder if you want to, of course. Uh, I, I didn't want to uh, blank it out because there's, there are a lot of scenes with uh, Grandma Sutton and, and, and different relatives on it, but it wasn't film that I took, and so there I, therefore I, I won't edit it. Here comes my dad, 72 years old, up on Simmons Ridge, down the road on his Kawasaki motorcycle. How about that, by golly, 72 years old. And here we come. In his younger youth, he'd always had a motorcycle, and he always loved to, to ride a motorcycle. So uh, even though he was a little older, again, 72 years old, he wanted his motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, he's aging here. You can see it. You can see it. Oh, he's going to take, he's gonna take Tommy uh, for a ride. Here we go, up the road. Tommy's my sister's uh, son, with uh, from, not from Chester. We're all up there together for a visit. Some of 
was uh, the kids had to sleep out in a, uh, in a small house trailer, I think. And what just wasn't a place to bunk everybody down. And here we come back. Uh, there we're sitting on the front porch. My goodness, look at the size of my poof. I'm putting on weight every day. I'm probably about 200 pounds on that picture at least. And here we are. What's Tommy got there? A turtle or something? That's my dad smoking a cigarette. He smoked pretty heavy. And there I am shining shoes. This may very well have been my mom and dad's 50th uh, wedding anniversary. I think that they may have been celebrating their 50th anniversary. Hey, we got a turtle. Yeah, that's what we got. And a rabbit. Yeah, let's let's see which one's the fastest. Who can who can outrun who here? <laughs> That's a shot of my dad's home up there, my mom and dad's house up on Simmons Ridge. That's on the front porch. My dad just got up, looked like got some sore muscles there. That's mom. That's out in the back. front porch again. Nice weather. Yeah, and there's uh, mom up on the porch and uh, Heidi and Tommy just ran up to say hi.
Department's convention there. There's my mother-in-law clapping her hands there in the green dress. That's on me. Uh, and she was born and raised here in this little town of Glassovan. And all of her, her sisters and, uh, and them still live there. Yeah, this is uh, a little celebration they had there in town. Don't remember the year. Uh, it's kind of a shame that uh, things weren't documented uh, a little better, but that happens. So this is glass open Germany. And there comes the band. If I remember right, this is the was a fireman's celebration and and Betty's grandfather, Omi's uh, dad. Got loaded. He was celebrating because he'd been a, a part of the fireman's department there in town for almost all of his life, and so he had a few minutes, too too many drinks that day, and uh, I can remember he got in trouble, <laughs> even though he was an old man.
familiar with the film. And if you want to watch the rest of it, you'll find some scenes, I'm sure, where you'll recognize uh, different people, my sister Dodie and her family, or my grandma Sutton, uh, or my mom and dad. But uh, the photographs, I just can't identify. So, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it makes a little sense. And I hope it adds a little value to the, uh, to the film, because now you should know a little bit more about who it was, when the films were taken, and what they were all about. So, enjoy. <laughs>